Mavs is still in the in the air. Jalen Brunson has been really big in the air, and are uh, the Mavs locking them up, or the Mavs going to do anything else? You feel me, big dog? I need to know because I looked at a little bit of stuff, but you gave me some in depth detail intel about it. Mm-hmm. Kind of let me know what's going on with that, uh, big dog. Yeah, the the Jalen Brunson situation is interesting. Like we've seen any number of reports essentially saying anything from, hey, he's already kind of told current and former teammates. And when I hear former teammates, I'm thinking like guys he played with uh, previous years with the Mavericks, but also even guys he played with at Villanueva, obviously. Or I said Villanueva, Charlie Villanueva. (laughs) I was like, wait a minute. Maverick, great flamethrower, Charlie Villanueva. Villanova. I I, I could see where you did it because I felt you when you did it. So all good. Charlie Villanova. I mean, yeah, it's good. For, that works perfect. For the, <laughs> for the record, this is cream soda, not beer. But no one's gonna believe oh, me but, now. Hey, nobody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he li- um, he on air. He lying. He lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, including former Villanova teammates. Um, basically, that it's a done deal. Him coming back to Dallas, and I, I'm. 99.9% certain of it. Like I know he shit ain't going has gone, nowhere, dog. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. I like I know shit has gone south in the sideway uh in the past. Like somebody brought up, like, well, DeAndre Jordan uh you know went back on his agreement. I'm like, first of all, DeAndre he wasn't Jordan a player. Right, 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 right. But like, yeah, more than more than that, not just that he wasn't a player for Dallas, and it's literally the polar opposite situation, but in that comparison. He was leaving. He was Jalen Brunson leaving Dallas to go elsewhere to be something he had never been before and wasn't probably capable of being. No disrespect to Jalen with the prospect of New York, but it's just like it's not the same. It's it's not at all the fit. And Dallas in 2015, they ended up cobbling together an interesting or no 2015. So that was after the second go around with Tyson. That next team, the best thing they put together was Harrison Barnes. Mm-hmm. Only because Kevin Durant <laughs> goes right. uh, goes to Golden State, so right. it's like, yeah, it's not at all the same. Dallas was nowhere near a contender, whereas the Clippers still at least entertain the idea that they might be capable of doing something. So it's it's not remotely the same. But I mean, here's the thing with Brunson in New York that I look at. I know New York's trying to clear out twenty five million dollars. Uh, and cap space for him. Hey, that's great. I know they hired his dad as an assistant coach. Hey, that's great. One, I don't think he wants to go play for his dad. Two, the the other two predominant players for them, their other two primary players are both ball dominant, meaning he's going to have to be like the third option here in Dallas. He's number two and he knows his fit here. Sometimes you can fit somewhere and you think like, oh, well, maybe the grass can be greener elsewhere. You don't know how you're going to be utilized there. You don't know how you're going to fit there. Plus, the New York audience, they're going to tear him apart. It doesn't matter even if he goes there and he performs better than he did last year with Dallas. If New York sucks, he's going to be saddled with the blame because they're going to look at him and be like, oh, we spent all this money on Jalen Brunson and all he's putting up his hollow stats. He's not getting us into the playoffs. He's not doing all this shit. Like That's how they're going to look at it. It doesn't do Jalen any good to go to New York. Like he has won everywhere he's ever been multiple times state champion in high school, multiple time uh, national champion in college player of the year. Now he's finally with a Mavericks team that's contending in which he has evolved into the second best player of a deep playoff run team. Why would he leave potentially for uh, a f- what? Like three or $4 million more per year with New York. And by the way, that's, if Dallas for some reason was just like, mm, what if you took like 23 or 24 or 22 or 23 million per year instead of 25 Dallas has already said, and we know they have the ability to give him more than anyone else. It's not a conversation. If Dallas wants to pay him, they can give him uh, they can give him basically a max. If they wanted to, I wouldn't, but they could give him easily more they than the four for 25 home max. No, yeah. I know. I'm just saying like, right, right. right. New York can give them four for 25. Dallas can easily beat that if they want to. And I think that they would be willing to. So it's just like it, to me, it's a non-starter there. There's no discussion, no discussion. He likes this team. He likes Luca. There's no reason for him to be like, nah, man, I want to go do it myself. Or I want to have this thing built around me. That just doesn't fit. 
I mean, you just said it's uh, in 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 the in your deep analytical terms as you do it, and I has I love it. I'm gonna break it down in my terms. Hail to the no, you <laughs> dumb if you leave. Okay, yep. Jalen Brunson, you dumb as hell if you leave the Dallas Mavericks where you just turned all the way up. People knew about you, but Rick Carlisle was kind of hating on you. But then guess what? Jason Kidd kind of let you do your thing. You turned all the way up against Utah. Why would you leave? See, that's the problem with these players in, in, in these sports things. Now, I'm going to tell you one little thing that Mario Edwards told me. I interviewed him, corner, former cornerback with Dallas Cowboys. He's a coach now. He told me when he was getting ready, coming up for free agency, he said he had to talk with Bill Parcells. And Bill Parcells said, look, I'm going to give you this number, and this is what it is. He said, I know it's not what you want. He said, but you're going to see all the money. Mm -hmm. and you're going to be happy here. And then Mario told me, he said, you know what, coach? I love you. But what you talking about, that's what third, third, third. Um, I mean, um, the uh, slot string? corners make. No, oh, yeah, third, yeah, slot, third corner. slot corners make. So I, I can't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, test my luck. So he ended up going to Tampa Bay. And mm -hmm. he told me he made a mistake because he said he, Bill Parcells was right. He said because within a year and a half, he got cut at Tampa Bay. He didn't see the money that they had signed him for. Right. He didn't see all that money through and then end up basically pretty much being done with the NFL after that. Well, NFL's, so, yeah, NFL's a little different, though. Just I know, in guaranteed I know, money, you have to I almost look at two different, different figures and contracts. Yeah, it's a little different. But the whole point of it is that he went out there and said, hey, I feel you. But I'm going to go ahead and I need to get my money, coach. I need to get my money. And this guy, that would be the situation where, let's say, Dallas says, match, we said, I got to get my money. The situation is not good in New York compared to Dallas. Not close. The situation is not close. Why would you leave stability for instability, especially your role? You're going to a coach you don't know. You're going to a role. It's almost like a job, DDP. Yeah. If you're feeling good at your job, right? Mm -hmm. Might be this job over there. It might pay a little more, but you don't know the people. You don't know the boss. You don't know any of them. Your job here might make it just a teeny bit less, but I feel good here. Every day I wake up, I go to work, I feel happy. I, yep. I feel comfortable. And I like that. You don't always have to jump out there and get the more money. So Jalen Brunson, if you turn on this show and this podcast, you listen to us and you stay in Dallas, because it's your best option, and you can make this thing great with Luca. They just got wood. Who knows what else they're gonna do? Because I know you said, "Are we done?" But you never know. This right. is the best situation for Jalen Brunson, and he just need to go ahead and stay. And I think he will. I think he understands it too. No, absolutely. I mean, you you can interview somewhere for a job, and you can have everything sound great. Like, oh yeah, this sounds like a real fit. They. They envision my role the same way that I do. But then like once you're actually on the so job, you got hired. suddenly you're kind of looking at like, OK, this is a very different oh, side yeah. than what I saw in the interview. Yeah, I've, I've had that happen. For. Yeah, <laughs> so I, have I. I've had that where you're like going through the interview and you're like, man, this is great. This is going to be a good fit. Get there. And be like, I hate this place. Two weeks in, you're like, man, this wow. is a toxic ass environment. Exactly. This is not yep. good. This is not yep. a place that I want to hang around. You're like looking at like, all right, well, can you I make call it six your months? friends can I make from your old months? job? Yeah. Like, hey, how y'all yeah. doing over there? We say, oh, man, we kick it. Yeah, we kick it and having a good time. How's it over there? I mean, you know, you know, we having a good time, you know, just working yep. hard. I miss it, play. I want to come back. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's uh it's very much grass not always greener. Sometimes it is mm -hmm. in this case when you're talking about like we're not it's not even like we're talking about like comparing green grass versus dead yellow grass or anything like right, that. We're right. we're talking about like the slightest shades of green. And it's just like, dude, just wait for the sun to pass over. You know, the sun passes over. You're like, oh, no, this side's actually greener. Like, just just give it a minute. Let it sit for a minute and uh, you'll, you'll see it for what it is. But, yeah, I, I don't see a scenario wherein he goes to New York. It's cute. It's because they're the Knicks, right? It's mm -hmm. cute that everyone's talking about it like it's going to be a thing. We hear every big name player seemingly every year linked to who? The Lakers, the Knicks uh what's another is there in miami lately has been a popular one always linked to people those are what we always hear miami's not a big market but it's that's that's the 
constant every year. Every right, big right. name notable player is linked to those teams. And two of those three, I understand. The Knicks, I don't. It's just because it's New York. That's it. So, yeah, Brunson, I don't, I don't see it. They would have, if they brought him on, three left-handed starters. That's interesting. <laughs> um, and his role wouldn't be the same here he's got a much better role so with uh with that being the case and you know to sort of piggyback off of this he was on um duncan robinson's podcast and he doesn't outright say it to be clear he does not outright say like nah new york doesn't make sense but, but he out, but he says it and yeah and, and, and people we, in real life terms we heard you say it you didn't say it Right. But you said it. Right. No, ab- absolutely. He He's basically just like, you know, I've won everywhere I've been, which I was saying earlier. I've won everywhere I've been. Uh, I'm not I'm not wanting to to go somewhere just because I can make the most money. I want to compete. I want to actually do something. Yes. And as we said, New York's best year that they've had in five, six, seven years. I mean, I know they had like one team that had like Tyson, Carmelo and um Amari that got like a home court and advantage and, in the and, first and, round. And, Did they win a playoff even, series? Yeah. And even then nobody was looking at them like, Ooh, the no. New York Knicks, you know what I'm saying? Right. They, listen, Jalen Brunson, if you go to New York, we'll never hear from you again. Pretty much. And like I said, those fans <laughs> will turn on you. I mean, shit. They, uh, how fast did now to be fair, I understand he's drifted around and he's not been able to stick anywhere but how fast did they turn on the project of Dennis Smith Jr.? Like, I get it. Dennis, he's, he struggled to find his Can way. Can we get he, him back? I've been wanting that for a couple of years. I don't think that? it's going to happen. Wrong? What's I, wrong I really it, thought now? it might happen after Rick was gone. I thought it might happen after Rick left, but he was well, with what's Portland. What's wrong with it? I, I don't know his current situation at this point. I know he was with Portland for part of last mm-hmm. year, and at some point he got cut. Um I don't, I don't know, but he, New York kind of ruined him. Like he was already struggling a little bit with Dallas. We can Rick bring had, him back DDP. Rick had bring- totally given up on him. Um, but New York, it's like, dude, what did they, like they weren't in any kind of position where they w- could justify not trying to develop a young player. That's, that's just the fact. Like when you look at where they were, they should have still been saying, okay, even if we don't think he can be a superstar, we should work to develop him. And instead, every time he touched the floor, they were mercilessly booing him. I'm like, he's on a rookie deal. You act like you're paying him $30 million to stink. Right. Like it, it's just a, it's a terrible fan base. Honestly, like I get it. Dennis Smith didn't pan out. We thought he was going to be a lot better. I'm convinced had circumstances been different and he never left Dallas, he probably would have been better, but under Rick, maybe that's really debatable, you know? So it's uh, it is what it is, but New York but coming does not. under kid though. Here's my thing. If Jason kid could get him though, yeah. in a backup role and really build up his confidence back together and build him back together mm-hmm. in Dallas, a lot of people in Dallas loved him. And I feel like that would give him confidence to play better because we love Dennis Smith jr. Mm-hmm. A lot of us weren't were mad when Dennis Smith Jr. Remember when me and you talked, and I said as soon as he got there, I said it's not gonna work because mm-hmm. I know how Carlisle is and Luca's gonna take over, and I know it wasn't gonna work. But now in the situation that you have it, where we already understand who is the star now, yeah. Now this is a situation where Dennis Smith Jr. You should be able to accept a backup role because you've been tossed around the league like nothing. Yeah. So now I would from feel New York like you, to Boston to Portland. Me? And now I don't know where he is. Right. So my thing would be you would embrace it. The fans are going to embrace you. You're still young. You can add a great element to He's the He's still team tight with Luca, too. Role. That's what I'm saying, man. Mm-hmm. That athleticism, that could be a great pickup, and he ain't going to cost no money. Yeah. No, think of it this way. Um, he basically, because the Christian Wood trade opened up three roster spots. He basically would be filling the Trey Burke role. Trey Burke role. And that's Burke barely played for Dallas. Yeah. And uh, to be clear, like, I think he could play more minutes, obviously, than Burke did. But my point is, like, if you want a a guy that can be a a scorer and a slasher off the bench, there you go. You can get Dennis Smith Jr. and have a guy that's still an athletic freak as well. So I 
I've heard nothing of it, nothing hinting toward it. I don't know his even circumstances of his current contract or if he's in the league officially. I'm putting it on Twitter to, tonight, DDP, and I'm pushing the it. hell out of it from out yeah. of there. I'm pushing the hell. I'm tagging Mavericks. I'm tagging you, Mavericks. <laughs> Y'all tagging you, Mavericks. Get ready, Mavericks, because Dennis Smith Jr. getting tagged on your, your thing for about at least three days. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, he even hinted in the past that he would be interested in joining Dallas at some point again after, and it was insinuated like once Rick was gone, mm -hmm. would he be interested? And he even kind of like Jason quote Kidd? tweeted it. This was even before Kid was hired. In fact, right, I don't right. even know if I'm Rick had saying. been fired yet, but right. he was like quote tweeting it basically suggesting like, yeah, like I, I would be interested in coming back to Dallas. But yeah, that so that's not the mid-level exception well hold on Let, let's wrap up the Jalen thing here on the podcast so basically said not interested in uh taking the most money just to go somewhere and um not compete that's not how he's built and if you look at what he was talking about in the playoffs um when people were talking about like you know when Luca came back and you kind of went from being the focal point of everything to playing off the ball a lot and having to kind of change up how you were playing in the series how did, how did you adjust to that? Like mentally? And his answer was basically like, look, he's Luca effing Doncic. Like he's a generational player. You're not going like he's here. Things are going to run through him, but my job isn't to take away from him. My job is to find a way to compliment him and to see where I can help the team and where I can fit in best here. And, you know, I've, I've found how to do that. And I've learned how to work off the ball more and how to take my opportunities as they come. That's really what it boiled down to. It was just a very, a very self-aware, uh, mature answer from a guy. Now I know he was in college for a long time and, you know, he's just now getting his first big NBA contract, but the, the maturity of his answer and everything was one of those things where it's like, man, that's more of a, like a grizzled veteran perspective. Usually you usually hear that kind of perspective from a guy that's like in his early to mid thirties. And it's just like, look, man, I'm starting to think like big picture and just wanting to win a ring. So I'm all about doing what makes sense for the team. Like a Sean Marion coming to Dallas and, uh, you know, in that 2010, 2011 season coming off the bench the entire year. Right. Having having gone from a guy that was like a primary facet of the offense and of a twenty point guy. everything, yes, a guy who in Phoenix had multiple All Star appearances and was a phenomenal, phenomenal player, swallowed his pride and came off the bench for pretty much that whole year until Butler obviously goes down. Karan Butler with the uh, dislocated knee and torn patella tendon. Uh, in January of that year. And then he just right. steps back in, but he never complained. But again, that was right. a guy that was like 33, 34 years old. Marion was at the time. That was the perspective. And Marion rightfully so was praised for that. You already see sort of similar maturity here from Jalen, I feel like. And that's, that's incredibly, that's a, a testament to him, you know, like that's very rare. And uh, that also leads me to believe like, he's not looking to cash out the biggest check he can. He just wants to, make sure that he's paid and respected paid like he's respected you know what i right. mean it's like, about respect it's yeah. not about like you overpaying me it's about you paying me respect just like i i'm just saying like at a job at your job mm -hmm. if you're at your job right and you busted your tail and you feel like you put in your work look i don't need you to go pay me crazy like a crazy number just give me a respectable number and we're good and yep. like you said, I think the maturity is coming from Jalen where he's already doing that and understanding that. Uh, but when you look at Jalen and just listen to him talk, just his body language all the time, he looks mature. Yep. Obviously, we talked about his father was a coach. So that helps you, I feel, mature as a young player growing up because you kind of already understand how the how the business goes in, in a sense. So yeah, you already kind of sure. grow up mentally more than other people have because they haven't seen it like you have. No, I, I agree hundred percent. So Jalen, I, I think it's more or less locked up and even the Mavericks as they've been doing their social media stuff, they're doing their various graphics and stuff of like Mavs pool parties and shit. They're still including Jalen in every, uh, every illustration they do. So it's like, yeah, they're, they're convinced. <laughs> They wouldn't be putting him in it. You know, he's an unrestricted free agent. They wouldn't be including him in it if they thought like, oh, exactly. there's a chance we might not get him. I'm convinced exactly. that the early report that we were hearing where he's basically like, look, 
it's not like a done done deal but like it's essentially a done deal right that's that's where it's at as far as i'm concerned so this isn't going to be a deandre jordan thing where in the 11th hour and 59th minute uh there's an intervention that leads to a change of heart right right, him staying home not him leaving and realizing only at the last minute like oh god i am making a terrible mistake i am not the player they're going to pay me to be and here i'm at least protected a little bit worst Uh i gotta deal with is getting bullied by chris paul right so yeah, so let's talk a couple of mid-level exception options here. Let's uh, talk about it, big dog. Yeah, so throw some names out to me. I I keep turning over in my mind different options mm. for Dallas here, and I've been scouring, you know, some of the some of Mavs Twitter as well, kind of reading the pulse a little bit, right. and a couple of names stick out to me. Obviously, one of them names we're going to know here he's in the thumbnail on the screen now uh you do have gary payton the second that's an intriguing one just because uh golden state's about to pay, uh, pay pool and he already said he wants some what almost what 15 to 20 some million something over like that? that yeah 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 and they're about to pay pool like a mm. hundred million dollar contract yeah, like he's extension. Pool's gonna get paid yeah so they have no flexibility to to retain I would love that Second. addition. That would be now. Here's the thing with Dallas's uh, current chip. Now, their mid-level exception. It's not the the most robust one that you have out there. In fact, uh-huh. it's a three-year deal with each season being about six point three nine million. Uh-huh. So that's about a what three for 18 19 roughly million dollar contract. Mm-hmm. That's not the that's not the sexiest. That's not going to draw people. To and that's, that, but yeah. To give context to that further, there are nine other teams with higher mid-levels available. That's Charlotte, Chicago, Houston, Indiana, New York, Oklahoma City, Phoenix. By the way, Phoenix ahead of you, and that is... And he will go to one of those before Dallas. Portland and Toronto. And Portland just made a nice uh, acquisition tonight that I really... I've I've been wanting Jeremy Grant for two or three years now. So and, yeah. And they're now they're going after a newbie as well from Toronto. So Portland's not yet giving up on the the Damian Lillard era. That's I like that though. I like how they're saying, you know what, we love you that much. We're gonna continue to build, get players to make you stay. I, yep. I like that. I like an organization that does that because too many organizations are always quick to let players go or get rid of them. I like when organizations are like, hey, man, we love you. We don't want you to go nowhere, and we will mm-hmm. do whatever to keep you. I like that. I like it for Portland, for sure. I hate it for what it means for the West just being that Right, because <laughs> it's what more, more difficult, right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, do it in the East. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, so with that mid-level exception for Dallas, three for each season being $6.39 million. Uh, there that's including like a 5% raise in years two and three respectively. So uh, it's not near as, wow, that is quite the freeze frame. I got on the video and OBS of me there. I look drunk as shit. Um, All right. We like drunk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. So Dallas is mid-level exception. Not, not the most impressive. They might be able to do something with it. It's interesting though, as you try and consider like, how can you get into the market for some of these guys? Cause we know Tim McMahon had said uh, in a, in a interview on the ticket the other day, the Mavericks are still targeting a three and D wing with their mid-level exception. And I don't think you're going to be able to get um, Peyton at that, at that cost, especially not when we talked about some of these other teams, including teams like Phoenix who are in that uh, mix as well. Phoenix is really the only one of these teams I see that's like, oh, there's your clear contender. Everyone else is kind of in that middle to lower rank, but Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, So that's, that's one that would be intriguing. He would fit certainly the role of what they want there. And I think he would be a tremendous addition. Another one that's very underrated um, is Isaiah Hartenstein. So he was with the Clippers last year. His numbers aren't going to blow you away when you hear the first couple, but the percentages are what I want you to look at. The dude averaged 8.3 points, Mm -hmm. 4.9 boards, but he shot 62.6% from the field and 46.7% from three. How many threes did he shoot? I don't have the full number ahead of me, like on pulled up here, but I can look it up real quick. But uh, here's, here's the thing. He is a huge fit in terms of scheme. 
Like mm-hmm. what he brings is a dynamic that would stretch the floor for Dallas, basically mm-hmm. give you uh, an even better version of what Maxi is kind of bringing and right. his ability to stretch the floor here. Right. Uh, let me see. Pulling it up now. So he took, let's see. It's not that he takes a ton of threes. He's just very efficient. He's efficient. He's just very, very efficient. Right. 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 Yeah. I'm looking at basketball reference here and it's like showing me his like attempts, three point attempts per game. It's like, just show me how many he took for the season. That's all I'm really (laughs) asking you, dude. Uh, Okay, he had 30 don't attempts. When the, don't 30 when attempts. The computers are that. Yeah, 30 attempts on the season made 14 of them. So, not bad. Um, yeah, 46.7% from three. A guy you can stretch the floor for you a little bit. Again, this is not a starter, but this is a guy who, with a mid level exception, could be a- an intriguing possibility. He's also never made more than $2 million in a season. So, he's never been paid so significantly. He ain't going to be greedy. Right. And last year was his first year as a uh, as a regular in the Clipper rotation. Mm. So there's not a lot of awareness of him. He's not like a a commodity known around the league and he's not made a lot of money, but he does have the ability to convert in an area that helps your team. So that's another one that's uh, an intriguing possibility to me that just, again, rounds out your front court depth a little bit. You're bringing in a big, a power forward center who can stretch the floor and be efficient and who you don't have to pay a lot of money. Right. Right. Hey, well, you know what? I, I trust DDP and I listen to DDP. So we'll see what happens with that. I think uh, more the second option will be more of a viable option because mm-hmm. like you said, Gary Payton the second. I mean, there's so many teams out there. He's going to understand his value now. Yeah. And these players now in the NBA do not undersell their value. They're going to get what they want mm-hmm. uh, because they have more uh, player control in the NBA. Um, so they're not just going to settle for any kind of thing because they don't have to uh, because the way they can, way they set up their contracts, they don't have to settle like maybe like for an NFL player. I feel like they have to settle more because yeah. the NFL will cut them off. And since the contracts are not guaranteed, they can play more hardball with them. Whereas in the NBA or even other teams, when their contracts are guaranteed, it changes the dynamic of how the negotiating goes. So I think uh, I definitely think Peyton won't be an option. But the second player that you did mention, I definitely think that could be happening, especially because of the money. Mm-hmm. You haven't made a lot of money, so you ain't going to be tripping in the scheme. It's a good scheme for you. And Jason Kidd, I like him. You may want to come over here and play for him as well. So I think three of those three things can make it happen as far as if that was an option for the Dallas Mavericks in the future. Let me throw another name at you here that you might be able to get with that. And it would fit, again, in your your 3 and D wing sort of outlook. Mm-hmm. What would you think of Derek Jones Jr.? And he's athletic. He is an athletic freak. Pair him with Luca, and you've got a major uh, aerial assault prime and ready to go. Now he's been bounced I around think he a would little feel bit. Well, with Dallas, yeah, he's bounced around a little bit. Had a year in Phoenix, a couple years in Phoenix, uh, Miami for several years. Then he was Portland and Chicago last year. I think uh, I think that could be an intriguing one as well. He's a guy who, uh, let me see his stats here. Last season. About 32, 33% from three, not a great three point shooter. Um, but you wouldn't really look at him in that aspect with no, Dallas, but, but his field you, goal percentage is about 54%. Right. So he's, he's so giving you that. He's going to give you that. I'm not even looking at him as a three point guy. I look at him as that athletic person that the Dallas Mavericks need. Mm-hmm. You understand Dallas needs a really super kind of bungee jumpy guy you know what i mean i feel like they need that and i think he could bring that in the fold i mean you brought in wood he's a bouncy guy but yep. you're bringing in Derek jones jr he, he's bouncy bouncy yep. and um you know luca coming to the hole throwing him up in the air getting the crowd all in it number and you just mentioned the ddp he's not he's not a have he's not a guy that's ever going to have a home let's no. keep it real he's yeah. never going to have a home because he's that type of player that you don't need him mm-hmm. but you can use him for a few years. That's the way it is. You know what I'm saying? There's certain players in the NBA like that. That's what he is. So in that aspect, with the athletic side and defense, 
bring him in. He don't cost you a lot of money because you know you're probably not going to keep him for a long term. So get what you can out of him now. I think that'd be a great addition, especially with the athleticism, because I feel like the Dallas Mavericks need a little bit more of that. I think he definitely fits like the, the front court player, uh, Hartenstein, like he's he's a kind of bargain bin shopping thing. Like I think he would be an underrated pickup for his fit, but that that's one of those things that I think he's obtainable for like what you're looking at. But in terms of what we're hearing they're looking for and what could also still fit Jones jr. Is a fascinating possibility. I was hoping that they were going to do something with that $10.9 million trade exception but it expires on June 27th. And according to Mark Stein, they're unlikely to use it. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know all the details of that, like what the reasoning is. Yeah, that's a major bummer because that's not an asset that feels like it should be wasted. It's basically a way to cancel out. Like when the money is not lining up in a trade, uh, a way to kind of create some of that wiggle room for you. Um, and I'm reminded too, like, the uh, the Eric Dampier trade clause essentially exception is what landed us Tyson ultimately, and then we it moved from us then to the Lakers when we traded for Lamar Odom in a separate thing. Um, it, it was just I, I followed this thread once before and basically figured out like a twelve step process of how it ultimately led to James Harden and the Rockets. <laughs> Uh, and blew up the Oklahoma city perceived dynasty and everything. But uh, yeah, trade exceptions, Dallas recent track record has not utilized them. Well, they let the Richardson one, which is really the Seth Curry one um, expire as well in that deal. And that was really frustrating to see. So I was hoping they were going to get use out of this. I read something that it's tied loosely to the wood trade because the wood trade can't be made official until the draft because New York owns the 2023 Dallas first round pick. So it's like, until we get to that point of draft night, it doesn't actually go official. So that's kind of holding up the timing of some of this as well. So maybe, maybe it is just a timing thing, but it's, it's surprising to me that they would kind of give up on about $11 million of free money essentially at this point. It's like you got a gift yeah. card, you know it's going to expire. Use it. Doesn't matter if it's not your favorite place to go eat. Go use it's, it. You got a it gift does. card. That's the whole point. Like you just said, it don't matter if it's your favorite place. It's free money. It's given. Just you can go spend it. Don't matter what you do with it. Just go use it. So if you just got the opportunity, just go use it. Go out there and get something with it. Like you said, don't got to be tasty morsel. But is it something you can chew on and eat? So make that happen, big dog. Yep. Yeah, and. um you know, it also would have helped you in the, uh, as Dallas is trying to find a couple of these guys, like we know they're looking for a three and D wing. That's going to your mid-level exception. will give you some options there, but you got three open roster spots. Like you could have been, you could be a little more aggressive on that. You could plug two holes still at this point. Now I know some, some people are still trying to figure out how to do the mental gymnastics for like miles Turner. I don't see that. <laughs> I just don't, there's no, there's no way uh, at this point for it. And would it, would it be a fascinating thing? Sure. But like Dallas, you know, they need a defensive minded rim protector and everything. Woods got the ability to stretch the floor and he plays with such violent explosiveness, which I honestly, like I knew his, his athleticism and everything, but deep diving even further into his tape and everything the last week, I'm just like, good God, this man is going to be a monster in this offense. Like the kind of looks and setups he's going to get from Luca and the explosiveness he plays with, like surprising ferocity for a guy of his frame. Um, that's something that this team just has not had with Luca. Um, but you know, if you if you were looking to do it, you could have had some options out there that I feel like now you're just kind of, if not letting go, you're missing out on an, an opportunity to, to make some upgrades. So Mavericks, I think for the most part to round out all of this talk here, I think the Jalen Brunson extension that is highly expected is more or less the one bit of wheeling and dealing they got left. We've seen reports that they are trying to trade back into the late first round. Um, and they've even worked out a couple of prospects and everything that they're still trying to figure out 
if there's a way they can get back up into that. It, here's, here's my hot take. The, so I said the wood take isn't final yet. I think it's going to be modified, and I think we're going to have either another team brought in or you're going to see Josh Green packaged as part of a deal that gets Dallas back into the first round for uh, one of the prospects that they were looking at. So, any you might have your day yet with all those prospects you broke down, but I think uh-huh. I think this deal gets modified and Josh Green is uh, moved on from. Yeah, I definitely feel like, you know, Josh Green, he's the dangling bait. We all know that he's probably not going to be there long term. We all feel it in our hearts and our souls. And that would be the one dangling piece that you can really move because you don't know he's really going to have the trajectory of being a guy that's going to be with the Mavericks the next three, four, five years. So mm-hmm. 